Greetings. Here's what we're going to be creating today. This is a Zelda Breath of the Wild recipe selector. So we've got some drop down lists and we can select one of any of the ingredients in the game. And below here, it'll display all of the recipes that contain said ingredient. You can select more than one thing here and it'll uh, pop in all of those. If as long as the ingredient is found in the master list, it'll bring in that recipe, the name, and the rest of the ingredients. Uh, I had a lot of fun putting this together. I just kind of stumbled on the idea when I was playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, and there's not a real good in-game solution to look up recipes by their ingredients. Uh, so I created this. Now we'll be using a lot of different things, a lot of different tools and functions to create this. Obviously we're creating some drop-down lists and duplicating those. We're using a query statement. So I'll walk you through how to query a data range in order to create this actual dashboard, the, the list on the dashboard. And then we've got some a kind of funky logic that we have to, it's, it really looks more complicated than it is to create that so that it will look in all of these uh, uh, drop down lists. So if I just have this third one listed, it'll look it up. If I just have this second one, it'll look it up. Um, that, that required a little bit of finagling, but really it's just a, a lengthy if statement, if type statement. Uh, we'll also look at how to bring in the data to our sheet. So over here you can see uh, we've done a lot of things. We've cleaned that data up at this point, but here's our data tab where we've imported the data from an external source. Here's that formula stuff I was telling you about, and here's the full ingredient list. I hope you will subscribe or at least consider subscribing to my channel if you find this helpful. Uh, if nothing else, check that little like button on this video. It helps it get uh, seen by more and more people, and I really do appreciate that small gesture on your part. You're awesome. Now enjoy this tutorial. All right, the first thing we'll do is go to sheets.new. This is the shortcut straight to a brand new Google Sheet. We're gonna name that, and then we're gonna go over here to IGN and grab the URL for this recipe page. I'm gonna paste that into a cell so that I don't have to type out the whole URL in the function that we're gonna use here in just a moment. I'm going to kind of clip that cell so it's not um, dangling out into the neighboring cells. Uh, I also like to have things look good, so I will be doing some formatting throughout this video. Right now I'm going through the process of uploading an image because uh, Google Sheets will not allow you to add custom fonts. So I've got this custom Zelda type font that I'll link in the description below. I have uh, typed it up in Word and then basically just taken a screenshot and uploaded it as a picture. Now what we're doing is importing the data from IGN. Import HTML is the function we're using. So you, you see I'm referencing cell C3, and I'm actually doing an array function here. If you enclose all these statements in curly braces, then I'm going to go through and import several tables all at once. So the import HTML statement will take that URL, then I'm telling it to look for a table, and then I'm telling it which table to look for. So I go through each table from three through nine, because there are that many tables with recipes, and I'm pulling them all in to my data sheet here. Now, we got to clean this data up, and what I've just done is use the mid function in order to extract the names of the meals uh, that are in between those asterisks. Now I'm going to do the same type of thing for the ingredients. You can see I've got some dashes and some spaces and some extra lines, so I'm going to trim and split all of the ingredients. Uh, or Actually, I'm going to trim and clean before I split. And by trimming and cleaning, I'm going to take out all extra spaces, white spaces, extra characters, non-printable characters. And then I'm going to come in and split everything by the dashes that are separating the words. And uh, I'm going to have to use an array formula here as well in order to get it to split out each of these different ingredients because I don't want to split just by spaces because some ingredients are two words. Now I'm going to label all of these columns. There's going to be up to five ingredients per recipe. And so I'm going to uh, apply named ranges over here on the top left to each one of these for easier reference 
in our later formulas. So I'm going to name them ingredients one, ingredients two, uh, so forth and so on through ingredient five. The other way to open up the named ranges is in the data drop down. And in this case, sometimes it, it is easier if there are similar ranges that you're referencing to just go ahead and change it manually instead of uh, dragging down and selecting those ranges. So I'm double checking that I do have all the correct ranges, rearranging this so that I can now create a master named range for the recipe list that includes the meal and then all the ingredients. If you double click on the sheet tabs down here, you can rename those. I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna insert another image for my ingredient header here, and I'm gonna have a master ingredient list on this sheet. This is going to allow me to just pull out all the unique ingredients from that recipe list that I just separated out. So we're going to uh, make it look nice and good, apply my font Alexand, which I like to use, and now I'm going to wrap within a unique function, another curly braces array formula, and grab all those ingredient lists, the named ranges, one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to pull out all the unique values. I'm going to make another sheet, and this is our, uh, this is our master sheet. This is the actual dashboard uh, you know, this is not the prettiest thing, but I also don't want it to be ugly. So I am going to have some borders there and the uh, the master title as well. Select ingredients, just getting things centered up so that it is at least a little bit pleasing to the eye. First thing we're going to do is create some drop down lists. We're going to use drop down from a range, and I'm going to go in here and rename that range for all the ingredients because I forgot to do that. And we're going to type in equals ingredients. And that's going to allow each of these drop down lists to pull all those unique ingredients and uh, use those as the values. I'm going to create some uh, background colors here and some borders just so that that looks okay in the drop down selector. I'm going to have three drop down lists, and that's going to create a little bit of complexity here in a moment because we can't just rely on one list being selected or one drop down being selected. We're going to have to account for any combination of these three being selected or not selected to display the meals whereby those ingredients are contained. All right, the last couple pieces here are a few more headers, the recipes and the ingredients. And I'm just going to merge and center some of these so that I've got the ingredient image over and centered throughout here. Now we need the query. So query will take a few different things. I'm going to do a little trial run here, just showing that I can query the recipe list. Select asterisk means that I'm going to select everything. Asterisk is another way, to, a shorthand for saying all. So it's working. And now I'm going to have a condition in here where it should be E. I've got the wrong column in here at first, where E matches this cell up here, E9. And now I'm going to realize the error of my ways. And E, column E in the recipe list is that first ingredient column. So this is just me. A lot of times I will double check, make sure I've got the syntax and everything correct before I add the complexity of the full query statement. I've removed a bunch of rows down there, so we don't need anything past like 150. And now I'm creating some logic over here. So what are the conditions here? Well, we could have no ingredients selected, in which case, and at the very end, I'll actually do this. I don't want anything displayed. Or we could just have that first ingredient selected, or we could have that second ingredient selected. So I'm going to rename each of these named ranges, E9, 10, and 11, into dash 9, 10, and 11. That way it's going to be easier to reference these things. And I'm going to wrap uh, an AND statement inside an IF statement and say, hey, if dash 9, dash 10, and dash 11 are all blank, then I don't want anything displayed. And what I have to do over here on the right, I'm creating some true false uh, tests so that I can use that in my query here at the end. And so I'm going to go through all of these logical statements and I'm going to say, hey, if 
uh, nine is text. So is text parentheses dash nine, then this is true. If 10 is text, but also nine and 11 are blank. And then for 11, if 11 is text, but also nine and 10 are blank, then that would be true. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here for each of the possible conditions of our dashboard. Now, oftentimes when I'm building a dashboard or something like this, this is the exact area that gives me the most trouble. So take your time on these as you're working through some of the minutia, because we're basically creating a lot of very similar conditional statements so that we can get the logic working and dialed in so that we can have the query functioning the way that we need it to. Don't be discouraged if there's something that's not working or broken that happened to me several times, even building this for like the third time I've built it. It's easy to overlook something small. Now, here's why we were doing all this. This cell up here, M8, is going to be our query cell. We're going to rename that named range as query. And we're going to use an if s statement and test for all of these different conditions which one is true. And depending on which one is true, we're going to put in dash 9, dash 10, dash 11, or as we get into where there's more than one, we're going to say dash 9. And then look at this. We're going to do an ampersand quotes bar ampersand, excuse me, ampersand quote bar quote ampersand dash 10. This is combining the bar with those two named ranges, the values in those two named ranges. We're going to do this syntax for each of these remaining uh, conditions so that up here in our query statement, you can see that there's now a bar in between, and that just means or in our query statement. It's going to say, hey, any carrot or pumpkin or any radish or any fortified pumpkin. And then it's going to go through the query statement in that way. So now we can modify our original query statement. We're going to make it a lot bigger because, as you can see from our test query, we're only looking where E matches. And that E is just one column of five possible ingredient columns in our recipe list. So what we're going to have to do now is both add the query named range, which is that M8 place where we've got all of our uh, values from our dash 9, 10, and 11, and we're going to check each column, E, F, G, H, or I, and we're going to see if any of those columns match any of the values in our query statement. And here you'll see me hit a bit of a quandary where I've got a pound value error in C15. This is one of the quirks with named ranges. In my M8 cell, I've actually got the named range M8 through 08, and it needs to be only M8. It can't be a range there for whatever reason, it won't register it. And so as I change that to just M8, the query named range now works, and it pulls in correctly into my gigantic query statement. For uh, neatness and orderliness, I am going to now cut and paste that formula tester over there into its own sheet so that we're left now with just this beautiful looking recipe selector. Now, uh, the only thing I'm doing here is checking every one of the conditions and making sure that everything's pulling correctly from our recipe list. And it does appear to be only we're left with one problem. When nothing is selected, all the recipes are visible. So we need to wrap our query statement in a giant if statement. And we just need to see if query is equal to a blank string, then we want nothing to be returned. We'll wrap the whole thing in parentheses and see that if nothing is there, then it's blank like it should be. And everything else now works the way that it should. Hey, this was a lot of fun for me to make. If you'd like to see more stuff like this, please let me know. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. You're awesome. Have a great one.